네, 다음은 어, 대담 시간으로 이어지도록 하겠습니다. 다섯 분이 대담을 준비하고 계시는데요. 어, 한국에너지관리공단 기후대응이사를 역임하신 서울대학교 에너지산업혁신공유대학 오대균 교수님 SD, SDGs 2030 달성을 위한 블록체인 기술 전문가이자 유럽 블록체인 파트너십 슬로베니아 경제개발기술부 블록체인 단장이신 네나 도크조프 탄소 소화 분야의 기술적 과제 극복 및 네트 제로 유럽으로 가는 더 빠른 경로를 위한 토큰 기반 솔루션 유럽 탄소 상쇄 토큰화 협회 전문 이사 맥시밀리안 로젠 온라인으로 참여하시는 분도 계시는데요. GCC CEO인 미스터 키셔 라잔사 이렇게 네 분과 함께 또 논스의 이성훈 님 진행으로 기후 위기 해결에 기여하는 파이낸스로서의 블록체인 주제로 이야기를 나눠보도록 하겠습니다. 네, 박수로 무대를 청하도록 하겠습니다. 아, uh, thank you. This is Song Eun from Nuns, uh, moderator of the Carbon Session. For logistics, we may use both Korean and English uh, in this uh, presentation. Before we start the session, I'd like to provide short introduction of each panelist today. Uh, Mr. o d e g y u n is a professor at Seoul National University and also the member of the UNF, UNF, UNFCCC Article 6.4 Supervisory Body. Um, he has dedicated almost three decades at the Korea Energy Agency, where he had le led various leadership roles, including Executive Director of Climate Response. He has led uh, the GHG Emission Reduction Registration Program and managed R&D projects related to energy consumption, fuel cell, and bioenergy. Additionally, Mr. Uh, Dr. O was a member of the CDM Executive Board at UNFCCC and served as an expert in energy and industry for the Presidential Committee on Sustainable Development. Uh, Nena Dokuzov is the head of project group for new economy and blockchain technology at the Ministry of Economic Development and Technology in Slovenia. She is also a member of the European Blockchain Partnership, the European Blockchain Service Infrastructure, OECD Blockchain Experts uh, Policy Advisory Board, and also a member of the government advisory body of Inatba and Gaia X. Maximilian Rostian is an executive director at the European Carbon Token uh, Offset Tokenization Association, a think tank dedicated to finding token-based solutions for technological enabled decarbonization. ECODA's goal is to accelerate the path to net zero Europe, leverage and blockchain to overcome challenges in the market. As uh, the executive director, Max is heading the communication and partnership network of ECODA and leads working groups. Camilo Trujillo is, uh, works as uh, Latin and Caribbean lead for the International Emission Trading Association, coordinating the organization's activities in Latin America and the Caribbean and supporting the progression of digital markets. Um, we'll cover the role of uh, blockchain in copper markets, both compliance and VCM. Um, and uh, Camilo will set the scene, uh, first with a presentation of the global trend of VCM, uh, and we'll continue the panel discussion. So, hello everyone. As mentioned, I'm Camilo Trujillo and I want to thank the organizers on behalf of AIDA for the invitation. It's a real pleasure to set the scene for this panel and I'm sorry for my host voice. I'm coming off a throat infection and I'm just getting my voice back. Uh, so, perfect. First of all, I'm showing my screen. Uh, let me share it, please. Um, perfect. I think you can see it right now. So, great. Um, just for you to know who we are, who is AIDA. Um, we are a non-profit business association with a membership of over 200 leading uh, and international organizations including compliance on the tracker markets. Since our foundation in 1999, it has been the leading voice of business on issues market-based solutions to climate change. Um, also, we have some value global partnership and strategic initiative with entities uh, such as UNFCCC, World Bank, OECD, and other global organizations and development banks in different regions of over the world. Uh, just for you to get a snapshot, uh, these are our members who have uh, from industrial sector, product developers, finance and investment companies, to uh, changes, traders, certification, and, and, uh, and targeting bodies, uh, uh, basically players and stakeholders that covers the whole car market's value chain. So, perfect. Uh, after this, I introduction also uh, my presentation will be divided into sections. The first one of current market trends, and the second one, uh, obviously, on technology and how technology can help to uh, scale current markets. So, perfect. First of all, I want to show you this map, which is a 
very important map in our carbon pricing world. Uh, basically, we are seeing here, uh, we are seeing this graph uh, that comes from the World Bank. And we have here the different countries and jurisdictions that uh, implemented or are implementing carbon pricing instruments. And what we have here is that around 22% of global GHG emissions are covered either by emission trading systems, as the one you have in Korea, or by carbon taxes, right? And these both instruments could uh, use, for example, great mechanisms or what we recognize as carbon credits. Um, and also important, BCM is not a number speak, uh, but BCM uh, has an annual, an annual value in order of uh, 2 billion US dollars. And also we have ETS carbon, uh, carbon taxes, which raised almost 100 billion dollars last year, which is an important number, not enough as we would like to help uh, stop climate change, but anyway, it's an important number. Uh, as an economic uh, incentive. Uh, also, I want to show you this Article 6 map, uh, which represents the, the percentage of countries that intend to use international markets, which is 80% of countries. And also, we have 25% of countries actively engaged in Article 6 arrangements, uh, which is also an important signal for us to recognize that carbon markets are evolving uh, each time model. And this market related uh, uh, to Article 6 transactions in most countries. So perfect. Mm, I'm going to pass through this very quickly, just for you to know that we have around 3,300 3, uh, carbon carbon projects as of today that issued uh, that already issued historically about 1.2 billion carbon credits. Uh, and according to this info from Turf Research, if companies follow through on climate commitments, uh, the carbon market should. Uh, pass from 1.3 billion to 2 billion dollars to 10 billion dollars, uh, between 10 to billion dollars 2030 to uh, 100 billion dollars 2050. Uh, and also, uh, to mention it very quickly, uh, the market is preparing to scale. And that's why, initially, after, as the ICBCN and the BCMI uh, on the right are trading uh, rules, core carbon principles. Uh, and standards to help in the creation of uh, having high integrity corporate claims, but also high integrity in the generation of carbon credits. And in this way, we can help to scale the carbon market as we need it to scale to help to fight against climate change. Um, with this, I um, want to show you this uh, timeline where basically we are uh, passing through the different stages of the carbon markets. First, the awareness, one, then the standardization of the uh, carbon credit programs and evolution of carbon markets through the Paris Agreement. And right now, as I told you, we are on the foundations for scale. And um, that's what I wanted to bring to you, these trends, this data, these numbers. But also what I want to emphasize is that the technology needs to be here to help scale the carbon markets. Uh, obviously, technology uh, has a key role to help uh, on this scale of carbon markets. And obviously, we have blockchain technology there. So I wanted to show you that. As market in evolution uh, used to be, and right now is uh, a market uh, mainly dependent on OTC transactions or over the counter transactions. But with this traffic, uh, we can see uh, what is the preferred BCM transaction methods to buy and sell carbon credits. And each time, for example, uh, we have some methods that are proven, uh, such as online return marketplaces, such as marketplaces for specific trade types. So, uh, uh, for example, you also have spot trading platforms, or we have future changes in standardized contracts. Uh, uh, even in the last um, in the last seed, but as at least in a seed, because uh, in, the, in the past we had a cryptocurrency, so they are gaining and gaining traction. Uh, we have ten cryptocurrencies, but anyway, we could use, for example, blockchain technology and the other kind of platform and transactions. Uh, those that I, I I already mentioned, and I also want to emphasize that other digital infrastructure is important to enable market growth. As I told you, on the buy side, we have these transaction platforms, tokenization, for example, but in the supply side, we have blockchain uh, technology, uh, another technology to enhance MRB. And that's why, and that's what we uh, recognize uh, and so called digital MRB, uh, which help us to have uh, more accuracy, automation, and efficiency to collect information on the monitoring, reporting, and verification process to know what is the amount of carbon credits that a carbon project can issue in different in different work types. Uh, and we can do this by using, for example, blockchain, artificial intelligence, internet of things, and geospatial data. Uh, I already talked about the exchanges, but here also I want to remark on the commodity side markets uh, on finance integrity and the legal nature of carbon credits, which is important also to have 
uh, this uh, to help scale capital markets. And also in the middle, we have the registries, uh, which is the backbone to have the accountability of the market, a number of issues and retired credits, who is the owner of those credits, but also to have the information of the companies. And finally, I wanted to talk to you about the climate action that the trust. And this slide is the architecture of registries. And you can see we have several registries. We have private registries from a uh, PC market. We have national registries. And also we have the international registries. Uh, and finally, the centralized accounting for the platform, which is a platform for Article 6 to collect all the information on current markets in the So basically, what I want to tell you here, and I want to show you, is that we have a very fragmented market in terms of registries. And we need a metadata registry to collect all this information. And that's why AIDA uh, created, uh, together with the World Bank and Singapore, the Climate Action Data Trust, which is an initiative, which is an initiative for public good uh, that is headquartered in Singapore. Uh, this is a little bit how it looks like and what it means. Um, basically, it is a decentralized metadata platform that links, aggregate, harmonize all major carbon credit registry data. And we want to strengthen uh, trust and confidence in the carbon market by basically uh, collecting all this information using blockchain technology with the aim of avoiding double counting and increased trust can create data and build confidence in carbon markets. Uh, so challenges we have right now, data transparency, avoid double counting, having fragmented information on several registries, absence of linkages between BCM registries and national registries, I mean countries registries, uh, also some limited visibility of projects in terms of activity life cycles, Sometimes lack of transparency in the crisis sign ups, and that's why we created all this. But there's all these challenges to increase confidence in the carbon market and also to have an impact of accurate and accessible carbon market data by using blockchain. In the middle of this slide, you can see how the climate action data trust can help to collect all this information from all these fragments, fragment, fragmented sources. And so we're having also uh, really very good value-added data with seems less information for different, for different stakeholders around the current market value chain. Uh, why blockchain? Uh, probably my colleagues in panel can talk more about why blockchain, but basically uh, it's open source, it's decentralized, we don't have dependency on a single entity, we have multiple copies of information, we have immutability of information, uh, automatic confirmation of transactions, interoperability and with this we can have security, transparency and trustability in the carbon markets to record the transactions and tracking the assets, the assets such as allowances or carbon rates. Uh, and now finally I want to invite you to visit the Climate Action Data Trust dashboard that we are going to launch soon. Uh, and just to emphasize that these tools will help uh, and will benefit uh, all carbon market participants from buyers, from the supply sides, and also even uh, governments, civil society, and journalists. So uh, please feel free to visit Climate Action and the Trust webpage, and also feel free to contact me if you have any comment, any questions. I would love to be in person with you in Korea. Anyway, I hope you found, you found this presentation insightful with all this information. I'm happy to receive any comment and any email from you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm going to go to the next one. 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 이제 배출권 하면은 자, 전부 자발적 탄소 배출권 시장을 얘기를 했었는데 특히 오늘 올해 부쩍 이제 자발적 배출권 관련된 이제 디스커션에서 어, 파리 협정 6조 시장 그리고 뭐 상황 조정 이런 얘기들이 부쩍 많이 나오는데 사실 앞서 카밀로가 말하는 말했던 것 중에 이제 세계은행의 자체의 블록체인 이니셔티브 중 하나인 캐트에서도 이제 블록체인을 활용해서 어떻게 해야 될까 고민하다가 6조 시장 관련된 어, 이제 페인 포인트를 집어내겠다. 이런 얘기를 한 바가 있습니다. 어, 도대체 육주 시장이 어떤 개념이고, 또 자발적 배출권 시장과는 또 어떤 관계, 관계성이 있는지 한번 설명 부탁드리겠습니다. 짧게 사실 배출권에 대한 설명이 좀 필요할 것 같은데요. 아, 기후변화 때문에 전 세계가 아, 우리나라도 탄소 중립을 한다는 목표를 발표했고요. 어, 전 세계가 탄소를 배출량을 줄여야 한다는 건다 동의하실 겁니다. 그런데 전 세계 모든 나라들이 각각 탄소 배출량을 줄이고 다른 나라에서 줄인 탄소 배출량을 사다가 시장에서 사다가 내 배출 실적으로 한다고 가정을 하면 
탄소 배출 실적이 그, 그 배출권이 어느 나라에서 발생한 배출권이 어디로 이동했는지가 투명하게 기록되지 않으면 전 세계에서 총 탄소 배출권이 얼마나 발행됐고 얼마나 이동되어서 누가 그것을 사용했는지에 대해서 관리하지 못하면 전 세계가 기후변화에 공동으로 대응하는 데 당연히 구멍이 생기게 됩니다. 따라서 이 부분이 관리하는 데 되게 중요하고요. 따라서 이건 그냥 우리가 그 실물을 대상으로 하는 그런 기술과는 다르게 탄소 배출권이라는 것 자체가 무형 자산이라는 겁니다. 다른 곳에서 누군가가 어떤 기술을 가지고 툰을 투자를 해서 노력을 해서 탄소 배출량을 줄이면 그 실적을 종이에 기록해서 이런 일을 해서 이만큼을 줄였습니다라고 전자화된 문서로 남은 게 배출권입니다. 따라서 탄소 배출권의 존재 자체가 어떤 그 투명한 여러 가지 그 발급 절차와 거래 절차를 보여줘야 하고요. 그리고 그것을 사용하는 그런 단계에서 모두 가장 투명성이 중요해집니다. 그런데 지금까지는 이런 것들을 그 고려하지 않았는데 이제 앞으로는 파리 협정에서 이런 것들을 고려하게 됩니다. 가장 중요한 것이 전 세계에서 이동을 할때한 나라에서 얼마가 빠져나갔고 다른 나라에서는 얼마나 그것이 그 배출권이 들어왔는지 이런 것들을 제대로 투명하게 관리를 해야만 전 세계가 기후변화에 대응하는 것들을 우리가 정확하게 파악할 수 있다. 그런 측면에서 이제 에, 브록체인이라고 하는 기술들이 사용될 만한 가장 중요한 역할을 하는 그런 분야다라고 일단 이해를 하셔야 될것 같고요. 파리협정 6조라는 게 에, 기후변화에 대응하기 위한 협정에서 탄소시장을 만들기 위한 그런 조항입니다. 그래서 앞으로는 에, 각국이 탄소 배출권을 만들고 다른 나라로 이전했을 때 그것을 정확하게 에, 자기의 실적에서 가감을 통해서 전 세계 총량의 이중 계산을 하지 않도록 하는 좀 전에도 나왔습니다만 중복 산정을 하지 않도록 이중 계산을 하지 않도록 하는 그런 것들을 중요하게 다루는 그래서 투명성을 강조하고 있는 우리가 앞으로 기후변화에 대응하는 모든 행동은 모두 기록하고 모든 그 과정과 절차를 기록을 통해서 우리가 기후변화에 대응하는 것을 전 세계가 같이 공동으로 한다 이런 의미를 가지고 있다고 할수 있겠습니다. Um, I would like to direct the next question to Nena. Uh, so on behalf of EU, um, I know that EU ETS is one of the longest uh, compliance market there is. I would like to learn if there are any plans or any uh, possibility of applying blockchain technology for the compliance market in EU. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, actually, I think that um, maybe we can explain a little bit what is ETS. Uh, this is Uh, emission trading system. Uh, it is based on uh, emission allowances, which are uh, delivered to uh, the polluters according to the emissions they produce uh, on a yearly basis. So those emissions um, uh, are somehow um, transferred uh, within allowances system Uh, to the market, uh, and we have two stages on the market. Uh, one can be that um, there is an auction for allowances, for certain amount of allowances uh, to be spent during the year, or the state um, receives a, a, an amount of allowances that delivers to its uh, companies. Uh, and where we come here to the uh, blockchain technology. First, uh, we need a clear um, and um, traceable system for the emissions. So we have that emission trading system in Europe, but this is based on uh, yearly um, average values of the emissions. So if we use blockchain technology, then we can ensure that uh, transparent, traceable system for um, recording measurement and verification of the emissions. This is the first thing. The second thing uh, are the registries. We heard a little bit about this. We know that we, um, at that moment, uh, there are initiatives of uh, integrating registries uh, from different sources. Uh, and ETS register is one of the sources that can show uh, how we can use or decrease those emissions. Um, here uh, you probably see that we prepared or we planned a pilot solution for the registry. 
so we defined um, the data source which comes from uh, each registry database and, and data users. And also for uh, UN, FCCC and uh, that kind of international organization, it can be uh, relevant. But uh, the most important is that um, emission allowances can act also as a securities. And uh, at that moment, this moment, the securities are trading on um, conventional markets. Now, with the blockchain technology, we have the opportunity to have the trading platforms for their securities uh, in the form of uh, emission allowances. And here is also a, a way of use the blockchain technology. Thank you for your insights. You mentioned securities, uh, which I think is a key issue for many projects that have uh, entered the blockchain space. So I've noticed that over the past few years, there has been over 300 projects, uh, blockchain projects that have jumped into um, the intersection of uh, carbon credits, ecological credits, or energy attribute certificates. Um, I'm curious why, what's the hype behind this? And also uh, would like to, um, because of the namesake, what uh, is the role of ECOTA in that regard? Thank you for the invitation. So ECOTA, maybe let's start there. What am I doing at ECOTA? We are basically doing what we on this panel do today. So if I ask my parents, so my parents, for example, don't know anything about blockchain. So my goal with this association is that I can sit down with my parents Christmas Eve and I can talk to them about, hey, what is the value in blockchain in the carbon market, for example. So this is why I'm passionate about the topic. And I think that we can come to this uh, state somewhere in the future. Now, you, you, uh, you asked uh, why are projects passionate about building on blockchain? Because there's one thing, for example, that we on this panel haven't touched upon yet in detail. We need more projects at the start of the value chain if we talk about the voluntary carbon markets. So the mangrove projects, the landfills, for example. <clears throat> all of the projects that either capture CO2 or either drastically reduce CO2. Um, and for this, we can use blockchain technology to funnel the money that actually goes into the entire market, which is coming from Western countries, and usually goes to the global south, South America, for example. We can cut out all of the intermediaries that take up some 80% of the actual money that flows into a carbon credit of VCM. So if you use blockchain technology, you can cut out many of these intermediaries, hopefully scaling the market and bringing it up to a size where it can actually achieve something. Now, you said 300 uh, projects over the last uh, year. I led a working group. Um, we published our, um, our findings this month, and we found 180 uh, projects, and most of them actually pivoted away from blockchain technology. Maybe just in a communication, maybe they don't mention blockchain anymore, but it seems to me that there is a trend of, do we actually have some business cases in this? for actual businesses to drive revenue in the voluntary carbon market. And right now, at least from my perspective, and Camille also touched upon that, you have to really focus on providing value to any player in the value chain um, to actually come up with something. And uh, this is maybe why we see some consolidation in the, from your 300 to my 180 uh, during the last year. So that would be, would be my take on it. Um, but anyway, so we talked about, Nina talked about also about the advantages of it. And, my understanding of why I am passionate about it at Ecota is that we, if I approach, some, for example, a bank, I don't incorporate crypto, the term crypto or blockchain to my pitch. If they hear, uh, so the voluntary carb market, we had a 10-minute presentation on it. It was very brief, very bird's-eye perspective on it. Complicated, and if you introduce blockchain to this, can add another layer of complexity to it. So my role actually is to just tell easily the, div or the advantages about it um, to, to people that want to invest into it. Thanks for the answer. Um, given that this discussion was set up because of the uh, relevance to the Busan Digital Exchange, which is primarily targeting the voluntary carbon market, while the CARAX is uh, responsible for the compliance market, um, I've had uh, crazy allegations this year that um, primarily from the uh, compliance market uh, supporters that VCM has no place in the future. So VCM will not uh, exist in the next decade. Um, that's a really bold statement, but I'd like to, um, I'm keen on hearing what your views are here. Um, you can also mention what are the key issues that has been talked about in the VCM market. Anyone? 
Yeah, I can, I can take this. So I understand the criticism of the voluntary card market, especially in this year. Uh, we had some Guardian articles, very valuable, but very damaging to the industry that, for example, one of the biggest registries, so the people that actually emit carbon credits that then get rich into the blockchain world, uh, some like 90% of the, of the uh, credits, they are invalid. So, for example, you buy the offset rights of a forest, uh, square, uh, square mile of, uh, of a forest, and the forest isn't there anymore because it got forested by someone, I don't know. And we had some of, some of these scandals in the VCM, and I can understand the criticism for it. Um, now, the place for the VCM, or oh, what's the charming part about the VCM? It's letting the market decide where it's most efficient to get or to capture or to avoid CO2. Um, this is my perspective on why we need the voluntary carbon market from like a CO2 negative impact. The compliance market, from my uh, perspective, and I'm a European guy, so has the way more robust investment case right now. So if people actually want to invest, so financial institutions, multi-million dollar sustainability budget, they will have such a huge, huge price impact on high quality carbon credits in the VCM that they, don't, they cannot hedge their risk. There is no liquidity in the market, and they will drive up the price like 5x with their first tranche, not even with 100% of their, uh, of their um, buy volume. So I can understand the criticisms for it, and I can understand why the compliance market is the more robust case. But for, from a, a CO2 negative impact of view, bird's eye view of it, I think VCM can be more effective if we enable it to. Can I, uh, there is another uh, very important point. Uh, we need that VCM period uh, because we know that um, in some years uh, also small and medium enterprises are going to um, uh, be obliged to reporting on ESG um, sustainability objectives. So if we start pushing that VCM <laughs> um, topic and uh, convince and raise the awareness of small and medium enterprises, then they will be in some years prepared for that real reporting that will be required from them. Uh, and this is the value of uh, um, that voluntary market that uh, it's supposed to be created sometimes in the history. Maybe just quick on top of that, because you mentioned transition. Uh, the VCM could also be viewed as, uh, because Mr. O talked about the 6.2, uh, 6.4 market. If this is the future state of it, what do we do until we get there to this future state? And this could also be a role of the VCM, like transitioning the market into something like a 6.2 or 6.4 market. Exactly. Uh, 6.2 and 6.4 is the price of 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 UN이 주관해서 만들고 있는 6점이나 6.4는 탄소 배출권이 만들어졌겠죠. 그런데 그게 규제 시장에서만 사용될 거냐. 규제 시장이라는 거 예를 들자면 우리나라에도 이미 있습니다. 700개 정도의 기업이나 많이 배출하는 조직들한테 작년도보다 뭐 5% 적게 배출해라. 이렇게 환경부가 정해줍니다. 그러면 700개 정도의 업체 외에 다른 중소기업이나 개인들은 배출하고 있잖아요. 그런데 배출하고 있는 것들을 물론 내부에서 자기가 스스로 줄일 수도 있지만 줄이지 못하면 배출권을 사서 자기 배출량을 없애는 행위를 할 수밖에 없는 그런 상황으로 들어가고 있습니다. 그러면 여러분이 여러분 개인이 만일 스스로 배출하고 있는 거 1년에 아마 우리나라 사람이면 한 5톤 정도 배출하실 것 같은데 그 5톤을 내가 배출권을 사서 없애겠다라고 생각을 하셨을 때 어떤 배출권을 사시겠습니까? 즉 배출권을 내가 살려고 하면 그 배출권이 갖는 속성이 정확하고 투명하게 기록되고 내가 그것을 볼수 있는 그 정보를 명확하게 알수 있는 것이 아니면 사지 않게 될 겁니다. 그럼 그걸 누가 할까요? 그런 역할을 누가 해줄 거냐? 특히 정부가 관여하지 않는 규제 시장이 아닌 자발적 시장에서 바로 그런 정확성과 투명성을 제공해 줄수 있는 것 그게 바로 필요하다. 그런 역할이 상당히 이제 앞으로 더 크게 작동할 거다 이렇게 이제 말씀드릴 수 있는 겁니다. That's all. Thanks for uh, all these interesting insights. Let's get to a more hot uh, core to the topic of the session, which is um, tokenization of carbon credits. So um, you might as well know that uh, the st each stakeholders, including AIERA, or carbon standards such as VERA or gold standard, has either provided a guidance on tokenization or in the process of open consultation. And there are other registry preparing um, 
internally, the guidance. What's your view on tokenization? Are you for or against it? What do you think it's, uh, the, uh, the, the, the hype behind this tokenization? Yeah, biased view here. I have tokenization in the name of my association, so uh, this is not going to be an obvious take, pro. Um, because of the enhanced transparency, because of the enhanced interoperability, think about it, if we have like an Aave for carbon credits, so you can plug in your carbon credit, get a loan-to-value ratio of, I don't know, 50% for it, so that, that enhances the intrinsic value of a carbon credit. We can also think about fractionalization. So, for example, one carbon credit right now is always at 1,000 kilos of CO2. Now, if you want to integrate, um, let's say, partial carbon credits into a bank transfer, for example, just as a general business model, you need way, way, way smaller fractional fractions of a carbon credit. So you can also think about uh, fractionizing it down to what we have in, in crypto to like eight digits behind the uh, decimal point. That could be also be, uh, something true. But apart from the advantages, because Mr. O also mentioned the transparency of it, um, I urge you to, so it, transparency for me, yeah, it's part of the, of the game, but it's not the most important point because right now, if you look into the Vera registry, one of the biggest registries, and you look into the biggest carbon credit there, they list, just in the open part, they list more than 600 pages of information on one single carbon credit. So if you want to get the information, you could look it up, but it's way too much information just for one person. And now we can think about, I don't know, storing this on a server, hashing it into a, a, NFT, a dynamic NFT anyway. So the transparency part of it right now, I think the market is already tackling it. We don't need blockchain for like coming up with the, with the uh, actual data of, of the carbon credits, but we can enhance it. And this is my view on why I'm so bullish on tokenization of the entire industry, because we, we can enhance a market that, if the underlying is correct, we can enhance transparency, but it can also be the other way around, right? Issuing a carbon credit on five different chains. Who is going to control that? So uh, the chains don't talk to each other. We can also int introduce complexity with, with tokenization. So we have to really uh, look at the trade-off and um, consolidate and make transparency the, uh, in the market right now and then introduce tokenization to it. There's at least my take on it uh, and hopefully a bit not too, too just bullish because I have it in, in the name of my association. Let me poke on this on, on a bit. Um, Ethereum Climate Platform has launched last year and uh, it was an interesting take because the All Infra who's leading this uh, platform has started with um, a pilot in the private chain with the Bank of International Settlement, Goldman Sachs. And now it has announced to launch public on a public chain, which is Ethereum. So there seems to be an interesting um, uh, development in both private and public blockchain. Which, which um, development do you think will prevail eventually? Um, yeah. At the end of the day, the public will prevail. But uh, we need to start with the private <clears throat> because we need to uh, be on the safe side to know who is on the other side, okay? Um, because the to tokenization also means uh, the higher accuracy, uh, the um, belief in the system, uh, then um, a part of transparency also, the, um, we don't need intermediaries uh, and here, uh, we can realize a lot of the savings. So, but uh, first through uh, private blockchain, because we need to know what is in the value chain, uh, how the value chain needs to be strengthened to this, uh, how uh, the, the, the smart contracts have, uh, can have its function. And we heard uh, a little bit um, earlier, Mika, okay? Mika um, asset reference token has is an option to has a commodity behind. So maybe there are some more uh, perspectives to be used uh, through tokenization. Um, uh, 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 그렇단 의미는 행정적인 역할에 있어서 정부의 역할이 항상 남게 될 겁니다. 하지만 정부가 우리나라에서도 그 규제 시장이 700개 정도의 업체만 관리하고 있습니다. 만일 전 국민 모두 아니면 수십만 개의 기업을 모두 정부가 관장하려고 하려면 행정 비용이 감당하지 못할 겁니다. 오히려 배보다 배꼽이 더 커질 거고요. 따라서 어 시스템적으로는 정부가 관장을 하겠지만 
그것이 관장한 넓이로 보면 당연히 민간 부분의 그 시장이 훨씬 더클 거고요. 따라서 민간 부분의 시장에 이런 역할을 해주는 그런 그 기술이 당연히 들어갈 거, 들어가야 한다고 봅니다. 또한 가지 이제 토크나 하는 것에 이제 저도 좀 찬성하는 편인데 그 이유는 사실 탄소 배출권이라는 게좀 무겁습니다. 너무 커요. 1톤이라고 하는 단위로 거래가 되는데요. 이게 여러분들 텀블러 사용하시는데 텀블러를 사용해서 열심히 사용해서 일, 탄소 배출량 1톤을 줄이려면 500년 이상 쓰셔야 될 겁니다. 그러니까 이 정도로 그 큰거기 때문에 에 어떤 유연성, 거래 유연성 같은 것들을 그 확보하려면 에 다른 방식, 그 배출권 자체로만 그 거래하는 것이 아니라 다른 것으로 변형해서 쓰는 게 필요할 것 같고요. 이미 국내에서도 에 윙클이라고 하는 회사에서 그런 그 작업들을 이미 들어가서 하고 있습니다. 이런 것들이 이제 시발점이 돼서 앞으로 우리, 우리도 이런 현실적으로 많이 사용될 수 있지 않을까 하는 생각도 들고 있습니다. So let's uh, deep dive on the uh, Busan Digital Exchange and uh, the context it has emerged. So uh, there are five Korean ministries uh, that have publicly announced plans to address the VCM market, respectively, um, and uh, I think uh, BTX comes as a late joiner, joiner uh, through that hype um, and enthusiasm. Um, do you have any recommendations uh, on what uh, guidelines or directions that BTX should take uh, in this context? Uh, yeah, I, I can yeah. take first. So biggest concern, if I talk to institutions that want to buy CARM credits is market dynamics in the sense of we have mature markets like the oil market, for example, so classic commodity markets where we have risk hedging, where we have um, a deep or wide breadth of the market. So if I buy in different tranches, even if I have a multi-million dollar budget, I don't have the price impact of uh, doubling the price just my, with my first trench. So focusing on getting the market more mature, getting the liquidity of it and getting uh, sort of like um, a mature uh, market in itself and one big thing from your part, a very big thing of becoming such a mature market, and this is why I always say go into a market as, some, as a public regulator, is building trust into the integrity of credits. Now, if you, wanna, if you focus on the integrity of credits, then you don't have the next Guardian article coming out tomorrow. If you are a corporate buyer and it's about your carbon credit, you have to stand in front of the public and say, hey, I bought uh, invalid credits, you have to buy it again. Anyway, so focus on getting the market more mature, and the biggest thing for me is uh, focusing on getting the, credit, the integrity of the credits high. Okay, the next one. <laughs> uh, apart from getting in integrity of the, the credits, uh, maybe to um, see it from two parts, okay? If you uh, are talking about five ministries that you have, um, I think that we need to start here bottom-up uh, approach. Uh, we heard earlier that uh, Busan has a lot of ambitions to be the uh, best one in the blockchain also, but um, uh, also in the innovation and everything like this. So maybe uh, we can start with the um, raising of the community awareness. How uh, the municipality can approach to uh, the incentivization uh, in the case of carbon trading, for example, if you have a polluter here or the company that is um, making more emissions that uh, should be um, um, should be acceptable for the future, for example, some shipping company or something like this, to have a case so that uh, it can showcase to the ministries, to the policy makers, uh, how uh, to approach within uh, what strategy they should define, how action plan should be composed, and then how uh, what steps should be done uh, to, to strengthen the system. Um, we were also um, talking, or I, I was listening um, to, to the presentations before, with this, uh, this is the opportunity to enhance the innovation, uh, which is one of the um, most important topics for Busan, but uh, also through uh, the, that innovation to uh, keep uh, the talents here, uh, to uh, give them the job and to make uh, the community development uh, even stronger in the future. 
두 분께서 이제 공공 부분에서 민간 부분에서 발생할 수 있는 무기성이나 투명성을 확인해 줄 필요가 있다라고 말씀을 해주셨고요. 또한 가지는 사실 부산이 어떤 역할을 하려고 할때 부산이라고 하는 시청, 부산시 정부만 하는 건 아니거든요. 부산시의 모든 사람이 한 행위의 모든 것이 부산시가 기후 변화에 대응하는 역할입니다. 따라서 시민들이 이제 어떤 뭐 배출권을 구입하든가 어떤 그 탄소가 배출되는 데서 그것을 줄이려는 행동을 시장을 매개로 굴러가는 어떤 행동을 했을 때 부산시가 그것을 격려하고 자극해서 그걸 부산시 전체의 그 실적으로 그 잡아주는 것 이런 행위야말로 민간 부분에 대한 어떤 그 인센티브가 될수 있지 않을까 이런 생각을 해봅니다. Thank you very much. I think we're on time. Uh, with that, we would like to wrap up the session and uh, thank you very much for your uh, taking the time all the way from Europe uh, and, uh, and sharing your insights here again. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me.